What's going on everyone? Austin John please here and today we're going to be talking about that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet gameplay trailer which I think was called Trailer 5 or just something about Journey and the Paldea region. Whatever it was called, there's things to talk about. We're going to talk about those things. And before we get underway, this video is sponsored by Water. Drink it. I'm just going to... I, I had a fun idea of I'm just going to start doing fake sponsored spots of like water and things like that. Anyways, um, before before we look at the website stuff, there were a lot of Pokemon that were not officially revealed to us in this trailer, like five of them. Now, you, you might be saying, Austin, I think there's only like one or two that you did in the reaction video. There's uh, so far, there's five been spotted. All right, so looking back at the video, right after the segment that we have the giraffe rig being shown up, brilliant, because classic red herring, there's so much going on screen right now with revealing this Pokemon that you're not paying attention to the minimap, which many times I did look at the minimap and I'm like, oh, well, check out the minimap and how the minimap works and stuff like that. But while all this is going on right there, because you just left the uh, Rigoraph segment, and now we're journeying into this. And in the bottom right corner, there's a mouse-like Pokemon, uh, a green toucan, and Jerry's still out on that. That little mushroom, mushroom boulder thing. Honestly, it looks like it looks like a Mario mushroom that has like a little block on it, or like. It was one cylinder that broke open and now there's some brown stuff spewing out of it. Whatever that is. Before I get into the next part, I, I want to talk about this. And it seems like this is deliberate footage that there's a lot of Pokemon not spawning in this area. And I don't know, I just feel like it's weird that we're not seeing them active. As we saw in the mini map, it shows you where little Pokemon are, but in this entire thing, you have the one glowing Jigglypuff. Cool. Think of that the same way that, like, you know, uh, the Alphas were. But there's nothing around it. And I, 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 it just seems seems weird. Know what I mean? Oh, the sun came out. This portion here that they cover the selfie camera, there's what is possibly another Pokemon hidden on the left side of the screen right here. Not exactly too sure what this is. I don't think it's anything we've seen before. Let's play this back real slow. It looked like it, it had two pointy black antennae. It, small white body, big yellow eyes. Yeah, so whatever that thing is, you know, they're distracting you with, here's here's Wooper being all pretty, but you're not seeing what's underneath the UI. Here at the, the massive horde battle here on Star Street. There's a lot going on. There's a bunch of Torkoals being thrown out all over the place and Growlithe as well. You see that the player is throwing out multiple po- Oh, there it is. What's that thing? What's that little guy over there? What's that little- Obviously it's a fire type because it's at the fire type uh, Team Star compound. You know what I think this is? We don't have any confirmation about uh, Armor Rogue or Armor Rouge, whatever its name is. This guy, that looks like it could be a first form of this. Cause it stands bipedal. It's sort of like, you know, Bisharp in design. We can see in this, the trainer is playing Pokemon Violet because all of Team Star is wearing violet clothing. We do know that Armor Rouge is only in Pokemon Scarlet. You'll be able to encounter Armor Rouge in Pokemon Scarlet. Maybe the two are uh, divergent evolutions and over here, we have the first form. That would make sense. And in this game, he evolves into Cerule Edge. Gonna have to wait and see, but whoever that little guy is, my money is on that's the first form of Cerule Edge and Armor Rouge. Also, listen, I'm doing my best here. I'm reading a word, a word that was made up. To be fair, all words are made up, but I may not say these Pokemon's names the way that you say these Pokemon's names until it's actually said by a voiceover in one of these videos. I don't know how it's actually pronounced. I'm just doing my best. All right. I don't watch the anime, so I'm just doing my best. And also, uh, when I was talking about the the herb, uh, the her herba mystica, I kept saying Hepra. 
because it's been so ingrained in my head the region in Breath of the Wild that I've always said Herba, and then I I realized that that's not how the word is written. It's Hebra. Now that's so ingrained in my head, and I, I don't know if I did it on purpose or because that's the way my brain looks at that word. I don't know. But anyways, those five Pokemon are brand new little sort of Easter eggs. And it sounds like they knew exactly what they were doing because, you know, they just don't put these Pokemon in until they're ready to show them off. But in the language that they used at the end, they say, did you see a glimmer of someone part of your team, something like that? While you were getting a look at these four trainers' journeys, did you spot a glimmer of something that could become your personal treasure? Did you spot a glimmer of something that could be your personal treasure? And that language infers to me that they put these five Pokemon here as just little teasers, little tidbits. And I like that. It's tantalizing. We finally learned that during these uh, horde battles, you could throw out multiple Pokemon. My question is, what happens if you only throw out one? You know what I mean? Does Do you not lose? Does it just take longer? We see that you have a 10 minute timer. You can only take 10 minutes to do this horde battle and also make a sandwich. What is going on with that sandwich portion, man? This seems very concerning for a very specific group of people. People who like to do the Masuda shiny hunting with eggs. Like, do you need to set up camp and then wait for a Pokemon to leave an egg? What is the in-game interval for that egg to appear? Also, you had six Pokemon taking a picnic. Whose egg is it? Know what I mean? Is there gonna be like some weird crossbreeds that are only available with this mechanic for having a certain selection of Pokemon in a picnic? I doubt there would be that mechanic. They could, but this isn't the same thing as, you know, ride around in a circle, talk to the person, get an egg, ride it around in a circle. Now you have to go through an interface, you have to set up the picnic. I don't know what's going on with all that. I'm gonna need some more clarification before I have any sort of thoughts, views, or opinions on that. Why are there so many toppings to a sandwich? Do each of them have a specific weight value? And the weight values are then calculated together for what the overall value of the sandwich is? Is this peanut butter? A lot of people now have peanut allergies. You can't have peanut butter on a ham sandwich. <laughs> sure as heck doesn't look like mustard. It, is this some Spain or Portuguese condiment that I don't know about? Because it looks like peanut butter. Are those just big seeds and, and mustard? Is it oil? I don't know. We get it. You're making a Cuban. Oh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about they're now making an advanced crafting system. Okay? You, th we didn't understand what the real purpose of the whole throwing out multiple Pokemon for the auto battles and everything else like that. But now we see that you get drops that are unique to that Pokemon. Obviously, only Lit Leos are going to drop Lit Leo Tuft. Like classic RPG styles, you defeat certain types of mobs, uh, which by the way I learned stands for mobile objectives. Uh, you defeat certain mobs and they have drops and a percentage chance that you get these drops. And then you're going to use these. The only thing that we know of so far is the TM crafting, the technical machine machine. Why didn't they call it the TM machine, huh? They had that opportunity. They chose to not do that. TMs can be made using league points, LP for short, and materials dropped by wild Pokemon after battle. I originally thought L LP would be license points, but it's league points. League points can be obtained as you advance the story or by trading in materials from Pokemon. So it sounds like you're going to be getting league points for defeating the gyms, maybe a bulk amount. I don't know, let's throw an arbitrary number out there. Uh, 100. Oh, look, here we go. So for rest, you have to have 400 league points and three of a crafting material that you have not yet seen. Also, I love that you're seeing actual animations of... What's what's this? Do you, do you have any idea what that is? I'm assuming this is metal claw or something, but there is far too much obscuring this. Oh, 
I was sorry. I was I was really really zoomed in. I don't know what that is. Is that another hidden Pokemon? Are there six in this entire trailer? Well, this is on the website, so I have no idea what that is. It's way too obscure to tell. Think of in Pokemon Legends Arceus, Arceus, where you were able to go and learn these different uh, attacks from the trainer in the town, but only after you quelled a certain amount of nobled frenzies were you actually able to do that. Those were the internal point system that they used to mark different events that could occur. One of, and it looks like now they're making those independent events now public by having league points. So what I think is neat is you don't have to do any gyms at all. If you go around and just grind around in the overworld, you get all these drops, and with all these drops, you can return them in for league points. Can you, in theory, just throw out Pokemon to auto battle, walk around, have them defeat everything, go, exchange all those materials for LP, and then, you know, you're gonna have Blizzard and Flamethrower and Thunderbolt by the time you go to the first gym? It seems like a very broken but specific way to play the game. Look over here. The trainer has 9,662 league points. Why do you need that many league points? Do you, do you consume league points every time that you make one of these? So it's not like an actual mark. Instead, it's say, for example, you defeat a gym leader. You get 5,000 league points or 1,000 league points or it's different based on the gym. I don't know. That 1,000 league points is now enough credentials for you to craft two TMs. I just rambled on for a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna edit all that out and I'm just gonna hit you with the synopsis instead of hearing my train of thought, which is, I don't know if TMs are gonna be single use or not. It does look like they are going back to single use TMs. We no longer have TRs. We don't know if we're still going to be getting single-use TMs in the uh, terrestrialization dens, the Terra dens, but it looks like you are going to be accruing league points from probably doing the Pokemon League stuff, aka the gym battles. You might get a thousand or five thousand league points for defeating a gym member. You can exchange materials for league points. Now over here it says 400 league points. My question now is, do you have to have 400 league points as a credential to be able to use those three required resources? But the language in here and the fact that it's listed next to three of item that we don't know definitely makes it sound like you are gonna be getting a bunch of league points and you have to spend league points to make single use TMs. Bunch of stuff going on there. Who knows, maybe Pokemon drop TMs in the wild. So over here, they talk about your profile picture on your trainer card. It now has shiny Pokemon battled as a as a counter and recipes collected. So do you have to collect the recipe in order to make it or do you make it and then you collect the recipe? I'm not looking forward to the uh, to the sandwich tutorial that I'm gonna have to make. That's for sure. So all in all, it looks like there are, I'm not even gonna count that. I'm not gonna count that toward the number. At least five Pokemon have been shown off in this trailer as a little Easter egg. We still don't know if Mila is standing on top of a Pokemon, if, if this big hot rod is actually a Pokemon or not. We don't know. But they're deliberately not showing us attacking this. Like we don't have, like they just, Cut away. It says Torkoal, and there's a total of two poke two Pokeballs. We don't know if that means that there's going to be two Pokemon thrown on top of the Hot Rod, or if the Hot Rod itself serves as a Pokemon. Now, Giraffe Rig got a new evolution. Teddy Ursa just got a new evolution in the last game. Hatterene's a brand new Pokemon. The Koala, the Sleepy Koala. Komala? Is that its name? Yes. Komala. Komala was not that great of a Pokemon. It just seems weird that we have Komala, Drifloom, and Growlithe. Oh, Growlithe got a got a new version as well in the last game. So why why do we have these two Pokemon here? I feel like they're leaning to something. And if I were to say out of these two, maybe Komala gets an evolution. Maybe it's no longer drowsy. <laughs> or what's its ability? Comatose. Maybe it's no longer comatose. Oh, we should probably talk about, uh, you know, 
Giraffe or Riggs for Riggaraf. It's still normal and psychic, the long neck Pokemon. It has two brand new abilities that we've never seen before, which are defined here. Kudchu. Kudchu is a new ability appearing for the first time in these titles. When a Pokemon with this ability eats a berry, it will eat it one more time at the end of the next turn. So you eat a citrus berry, and then the next turn you eat the same citrus berry? Is, is that what we're seeing there? Oh yeah, look at that. Kudchu. And Armor Tail. It makes the opposing Pokemon unable to use priority moves. Well, that's neat. Ah, we got a little, uh, Sinistee. What's that berry that randomly gives you plus two in a random stat? That would be pretty crazy with this. Or being able to use Kudchu and also, like, Thief to be able to snatch items from other Pokemon. Could be good. Could be good. On this screen, we can see that there's, like, more specific items related to specific Pokemon. Uh, it looks like the Azumarill line has the Azuril fur, and the Teddy Ursa line has the Teddy Ursa claws. Shinx Fang, Starly Feathers, Fletchling Feathers, Snom Threads, Snover Berries, and you can make multiple TMs, so yeah. We're back to single-use TMs. They're starting to drop little, little hints, little Easter eggs. We still don't know the full amount of Pokemon that are going to be shown off or even in this Dex. I'm getting even more excited. Five, six weeks away now. Oh, it's time for me to start making pre-coverage videos soon. Okay, well, I'm gonna start working on those. Great. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Till next time, Austin Chuck. Man, they see me shining like I got the charm. Stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm. Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one. And if you need to know how, check out Austin John. Champion flow, flow, yeah, I got that champion flow.